Good morning, everybody. Dr. Vong here. Today is September 13th. This is your quick COVID update. Um, I want to talk a little bit about side effects of the vaccines um, because a lot of people don't seem to understand how this works. They'll say, you know, I, ha I had the vaccine sh shot, Dr. V, and then I developed a blood clot. Did it cause it or not? And this was a comment on one of my fan page yesterday in one of my videos. And I said, you know, she said, why did I get a blood clot? And I said, because people get bl blood clots. And some people did not like that answer. See, you're rude. You don't know what you're talking about, et cetera, et cetera. So today I'd like to explain that, you know, correlation is not causation. <clears throat> and there are things that people get blood clots before COVID, before COVID vaccines, people got blood clots. You know, uh, women who take birth control pills are at higher risk of blood clots, but we still give birth control pills with that warning, you know. Um, <clears throat> what about the, the inflamed heart, Dr. Vong, the cardiomyopathy? I don't want uh, to take it because it could cause cardiomyopathy. Talk about that. People get cardiomyopathy. Before there was COVID, before there were COVID vaccines, People got cardiomyopathy. It's a known disease. It's in all the medical textbooks. It's nothing new. And we had a condition that's called viral cardiomyopathy. That's caused by viruses, not COVID, not coronavirus, viral cardiomyopathy. You know, myocarditis, Dr. V, myocarditis. Yeah, we have viral myocarditis before COVID. So the, what you have to understand is you need huge numbers. When you have a very rare event, um, multiply it, and, and you're giving, you know, millions, hundreds of millions, if you know, soon to be billions of doses, that you're going to have some, some things that are reported. But it doesn't mean it was caused by the vaccination. Who understands what I'm trying to say? Because that's called the background, all right? So background people have uh blood clots you know it's so what you have to decide is is there a higher incidence of the side effect more than background and so with the astrazeneca shot they were alerted because this is called science that there could be potentially more blood clots um and they looked at the data, and last time I looked, this number might have changed, but <clears throat> it was roughly 20 blood clots, maybe 30 blood clots, out of millions of doses. And it was all female. It was all young female. And we already know, as I said before, young female can get blood clots, especially if they're on birth control. So they had to take, you know, they paused everything, you know, and the anti-vaxxers come out and make all sorts of accusations and things like that and reasons to not get this vaccine. They're like, dude, they're just chill out. They're looking it over. And the last time I looked at the data, it's roughly, it's a slightly higher incidence above background. And by slightly higher, I mean, it was like one in a million dose. So higher than, than background. And so what that warrants is just a warning, you know, be careful if you are getting this vac vaccination, it was the AstraZeneca at the time, and you're a young female and you are taking um, birth control. So this other one, uh, car this cardiomyopathy, this myocarditis, this inflammation of the, of the heart tissues. Dr. Vaughn, what about that? Well... Answer to that is we know people develop that before COVID. There was a th condition called viral myocarditis, and uh, but kid people getting vaccinated develop it. Doesn't mean it was caused by the vaccine, right? It's there, I'm sure there are people because there have been billions of doses given that drive home and get in a car wreck. The fact that they got the shot, the vaccine, did not cause the car wreck. What I do know about myocarditis is that patients with, patients and young, young, they studied this in football, 
players um, who come down with COVID have myocarditis. Like they, they can develop as a long haul syndrome, this viral myocarditis. And so if you look at the data, the actual um, incidence of getting vaccinated and developing myocarditis is actually lower. It's less than your chance if you caught COVID. I'll say it again. So if you catch COVID, your chances of developing this myocarditis is actually higher than developing myocarditis from the vaccine. So again, the vaccines are very effective, very safe. And sometimes data, it just takes a while to tease out. Now, Dr. V, why does one thing happen with one vaccine and not another vaccine? Well, there are many, many factors. I like to use this analogy. Uh, airplane crashes. They're very rare, much safer than cars. But, you know, we hear an airplane crash, it makes the news. It's never pilot error. It's never just pilot error. There's always a series of up to 10 to 11 things that usually have to happen before a uh, plane will crash. You know, it could be a foggy morning. It could be a pilot's first time going that route. It could be, you know, a new radar tech uh, at the control tower. It could be an international flight where one, one pilot does, the pilot doesn't speak the language as well or doesn't hear or doesn't understand. There's multiple things that have to happen for an airplane crash. So in this pandemic, it's never just the virus. There's the virus, and then there's the patient, right? There's the receiver, there's the host, there's the person. So if you're young and healthy, like Joe Rogan, chances are you will survive if you catch coronavirus. There's a very good chance. There's also a, a chance that you might die. And there's about anywhere from, and the data's coming in, about 30, 30 to 50, 50, percent chance that you'll develop long haul syndrome where months after getting over or testing negative for coronavirus, you still have side effects. Bra uh, uh, brain fog, <laughs> like I just had, brain fog, lethargy, shortness of breath, fatigue, up to six months to a year. You know, as high as 15% will have symptoms up to a year. So that's awfully high. I would rather not take that chance. So back to Joe Rogan, because I hear this all the time. Look, Ivermectin worked for Joe Rogan. How the fuck do you know? You don't know. One, he's the host. He's in MMA. He works out. He trains jujitsu all the time. Relatively healthy, I assume. I don't know his medical background. Relatively young. You know, he's in his early 50s. When he got sick, they, and he said this, we threw the kitchen sink at it. Yes, he took ivermectin, but he also took monoclonal antibodies. He took vitamin D. He took prednisone and, and breathers and supplemental oxygen. I'm sure he did the peroxide bullshit thing. He threw everything at it. So in other words, you don't know which one worked. The only one that has been shown uh, to be efficacious, effective is actually the monoclonal antibodies. Anywhere between 70 to 80% effective. So of, of all the stuff that he threw... That he, these are his words. We threw the kitchen sink at it. The only one that's been shown to be effective are monoclonal antibodies. And now everyone's like, see, ivermectin worked for Joe Rogan. No, you, don't, you can't say that. And a case study of one is not science. You have to look at this with a much broader view. And the much broader view is that vaccines are very effective and very safe. And I'm happy to report that, you know, we have 70% of Americans, eligible Americans with their first dose, at least one dose of all eligible Americans have gotten their first dose, 70, 71%. So very, very soon, the anti-vaxxers, as they always are, will become a vast majority, a, a vast minority, <laughs> a vast minority and, and a fringe element because we all want to get beyond this pandemic. All right. That's it for today. I'll see you again tomorrow for another COVID update.